The prisons are overflowing with Indigenous people. Yes. And yet they are not getting the same entitlement even behind bars. No. One of the really, one of the really amazing things is over a number of years, a whole bunch of people in Indigenous health policy have, have made big inroads in understanding that health healthcare needs to be better funded. We've got diff access to medications such as Section 100 and Closer Gap um, uh, medications. The whole purpose of this was understanding that if you remove the barriers to Aboriginal people getting access to those medications, they're more likely to take it. And it's actually going to save the state an extraordinary amount of money in the complications that don't happen because things are treated first. But then we have this crazy idea um, this country still likes locking up Aboriginal people. Aboriginal people are 50 more times likely to be incarcerated than non-Indigenous uh, compadres. Um, and yet, as soon as Aboriginal people go into jail, they lose all of those hard-fought hard rights that we've had. All those things about getting extra medic, better med access to medication, better access to health care, all those other things about leavening up the, the playing field, that the moment they become incarcerated, gone, lost, out the door. And suddenly, the, the really bizarre thing that I've noticed, I first worked in prisons about 15 years ago. When I came back to working in a prison again, although, although my practice, day-to-day -day practice of medicine, things had changed extraordinarily. Everything was computerised, everything's run on the telephone, everything's at the other end of a line. You know, you've got help everywhere at all. You've got cameras that you can uh, meet with your patient online with a, with a specialist at the drop of a hat. Um, um, the drugs have changed, the access to drugs has changed. When I walked back into the prison, nothing had changed in the previous 15 years. That there was no computer on my desk, there was no phone on my desk, and the drug list that, that I have to give out to those men is the same drug list that we had from virtually 15 years ago, that it's hardly grown at all. Even though for you, Lewis and I, it's our human right. Our access to Medicare really is a very fundamental basic right. You're saying prisoners don't get that. Prisoners don't get that. Unfortunately, there's a philosophy through, um, through the common, uh, common law countries um, of a thing which is referred to as citizen death in, in simple terms. So you may have problems with, with your, um, your eligibility to vote if you've been in prison for here instance in, in, the, in Australian law. If you've had an imprisonment term greater than 12 months, you are, cannot be a federal parliamentarian. Um, um, but along with the other rights that you, loo that you lose, as well as choosing when to eat and what to eat and when and where you can sleep, um, unfortunately, you lose your access to the, we, you know, we have this universal healthcare, healthcare system or health insurance system of the, uh, of the MBS, um, which, which is the envy of the world. But the men, who, the men and women who are in prison have no access to that. And because Aboriginal people are disproportionately affected, so the, the, you know, many of the prisons that, that, that um, my compadres work in are these, are these falsely created communities which are 70 to 80 per cent black. Um, in any other community that is 70 to 80 per cent black, that would, that would immediately have a, a re-rigging of how much health care is, is given for that community to meet the needs, but not for the people who are in prison. You know, it's not the corrective services who aren't trying. It's not the it's not the guards in there who aren't trying. You know, the 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 prison managers. You know, the, the guys that I deal with. These are good people who do their best to look after these men with the unbelievably limited resources that they have. And because of these archaic rules, that when somebody goes into prison, they lose their rights as or at least some of their rights as a citizen. It seems to be okay somehow. That, that, that the access to health care and medication, which we know they should have given the rest of their health demographic, is then taken from them while they're in prison. And, and if it wasn't for really, really good people bending and pushing rules as best they can um, to try and give them some degree of access, then there'd be almost nothing at all. And I don't, if we're going to be, if we're going to have corrective services, can we at least make sure that the people doing those jobs are well funded enough that they can correct something. Otherwise, let's just go back to calling it punitive services. You see this new focus on trying to reduce the mandatory sentencing pattern uh, and that whole industry of building more prisons. We'll soon have in Australia the biggest prison in the Southern Hemisphere. 
But you're saying that's not enough because right now the, the prisons are overflowing with Indigenous people and we owe them rights too. Yes, and, and the other thing which I, which I find astounding is when, when a sentence is given, the punishment should be laid out in the sentence. But I'm, I'm very, very certain that none of our magistrates or none of our members of the judiciary, when they say, I sentence you to two years, I'm sure that there is no member of the judiciary who means I sentence you to, to two years imprisonment and substandard health care. And in fact, I think if we went back to those same members of the judiciary and say, oh, so did you mean to sentence them to substandard health care? I am certain, I'm certain that they would say, no, 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 we expect their health care to be the same. And in fact, you can't punish them by taking away health services unless I put them in my sentence. And let's face it, our judges won't do that. I know many Indigenous people that come in and out of prison in that pattern uh, have long-term illnesses. They have disabilities that go back to birth and childhood. Yes. So are these the things that are not being addressed because of that lack of Medicare coverage? Absolutely. That, that we, you know, we, uh, look, the, the people that I work with in, in the healthcare and the prison, really they work very hard, but we just don't have anywhere near enough. We don't have the dental services that we need. We don't have the straightforward health services that we need. We don't have anywhere near the mental health services that we need. You know, the, 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 one of the reasons that a lot of these guys have ended up in jail one way or another is to do with the extraordinary degree of life trauma that they've had along the way. They're damaged, damaged people. That's how this all ended up. And if at no stage do we sit down and try and help them unpick what it is that's happened in the past that led to that circumstance, which led to their susceptibility to get into jail, then how can we call it a correction? Um, um, it's the correction that seems to be required here is for a minister and the government to act. This is a fairly simple remedy that could be put in place. Absolutely. A lot of the other things about imprisonment are going to be very difficult and long term and very, very complex. But it's within the purview of the federal government today to simply say, we will, we will now create a new dispensation that, that access to Medicare and PBS funding will go to those citizens of ours who are in the prison system as well. And if they just did that, then that would, that would expand the services that are available. At present, when we're trying, now we do the best we can to keep records, we do the best to try and look after these people, um, but, but if there, was, if there was access to the, to the Medicare and PBS funding, Aboriginal medical services who are, who are crying out for the opportunity to come into these prisons, they could be involved in the care, which also means then you would get a continuum of care from when these guys leave the prison and when they go out, and even if they're going back to another community that that Aboriginal medical service doesn't look after, there will be a medical record that can be passed very simply and electronically and, and instantly to the people who are going to be looking after them. Whereas at the moment, it's, we've got this cumbersome system of records that even for a patient to be discharged and for the, for the receiving doctor at St Elsewhere's to know what medication they're on becomes an extraordinary palaver. And, and all these things are in highly secure areas. This is, this is not like, oh, I can take some notes. This is not a GP, I can take some notes with me. And when I get a call back from my specialist mate, I, I can pull up my little tablet and, and look at my electronic record from my practice and say, oh yes, yes, I wanted to talk to you about Mr. Smith. No, 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 I can't take any of those documents. It's, it's against the law, you know? Nothing can go in and nothing can go out that hasn't been approved by everything. I can't take a mobile phone in, and, and rightly so. I'm not suggesting that I should be able to. But if we're going to have this system where, where we have extraordinary barriers thrown up to communication into and out of the prison, then, then the simple measure of, in, of, of having equitable federal funding for the citizens in prison to the citizens out of prison would actually fix up an awful lot of those medical communication issues at the same time and would just make an extraordinary difference. Well, I hope you've started something good here and being able to carry that message through AIDA to the AMA president, Dr. Michael Gannon. Absolutely. And, and I've encouraged all of our other medical colleagues, all of these guys know people who know people. They talk to ministers, they talk to their members of parliament, they talk to people in the community who have influence. And I would just ask them and beg them that we all any doctor that I've spoken to and told them about this has first been aghast and then outraged that a citizen should be denied those rights. 
uh, just encourage everybody, don't just sit back on your chair and be outraged. Pick up the phone, pick up a pen, you know, grab your computer, write a letter, make a meeting with your Member of Parliament, have a talk about it. It's just wrong. If we're going to be a corrective services, let's give a chance to correct these, some of the issues. Thank you, my brother.